Hey everybody, it's Daniela Lee. So I'm sending this message out to my favorite students ever from the Harmony School of Excellence in El Paso. How are you guys doing? <laughs> so I know this is a pretty hard time uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic that's happening. We're all stuck at home. So I just kind of wanted to lighten things up a little bit, you know, maybe cheer you guys up a bit. So I'm going to be reading out loud from my book, uh, Son of the Sea Wolf, from this lovely spot here in the Botanical Gardens at Cornell University. And yeah, like, why don't we like pretend like we're all here, like that you're sitting right here next to me and we're just reading out loud a book together as friends. So I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> Son of the Sea Wolf by Daniela Lee. <laughs> Chapter 1 The breeze blew softly over the waves. The sun was just about to set over the calm blue sea. Some seagulls flew over the beach, playing in the wind. A young girl smiled as she watched their antics. Just look at the sea, she said to herself. So calm and quiet, it looks as if nothing could ever disturb it. But appearances can be deceiving. Joshua took out his spyglass and surveyed the ocean. It looks like we'll be having good weather, he said to himself. He got down from the lookout post and ran over to the steering wheel. He turned the ship ever so slightly to the east. There, he said, satisfied. He began to adjust the sails, which was not an easy task. He grunted as he pulled at the ropes with his teeth. He strained at the ropes, and finally the sails went up. That's better, said Joshua, and gave a short bark of approval. For yes, Joshua was a dog. Border Collie, to be precise. Now Joshua walked over to the edge of the railing. He lifted his face up to catch the ocean breezes that he loved. He closed his eyes in pure delight. Captain of his own ship, adrift on the sea, what more had life to offer? It didn't matter to Joshua that he was all alone. He rather liked it that way. Humans could ruin everything in a dog's life. This he knew quite well. Why was Joshua all alone in the wide, wild sea? How did he get this fine ship for his own? How does he even steer correctly? Questions, questions, questions. <laughs> Be patient, dear reader. You will know all this in time. Joshua now began to study his map. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't even care. What he loved was being out on the open sea. It did not matter where he went, so long as he never, ever met up with... Joshua suddenly turned from his map. What was that speck floating on the horizon? He took his spyglass and made his way to the lookout. Chapter 2. Peering through the spyglass, Joshua could make something out on the horizon. What could it possibly be, he thought to himself. If it was another ship, it was nothing much to worry about. He could sail away. For you see, Joshua was by nature a very solitary animal. He did not care for company, or so at least he thought. Besides, no human could understand that this was indeed his own ship, and he was no ordinary dog, but a captain. Joshua was a bit prideful of his ship. But who could blame him? He is quite an accomplished dog. Not many dogs are captains. Joshua continued to stare through his spyglass. Now the speck looked different. It was no longer just a speck. It was a shining metal structure with spines sticking out from all sides. Joshua suddenly dropped his spyglass. Oh no, he shouted. It's the sea urchin. They found me. Without further speculation, Joshua quickly ran down from the lookout and to the ship's wheel. Maybe he could sail away fast enough. There was not much of a chance. The sea urchin was just about the fastest ship on the sea. Joshua knew this quite well. And not only that, but now a strong wind began to blow, ignoring Joshua's desperate efforts to sail away from the hated sea urchin. Soon the sea urchin had caught up to Joshua's ship, which was named the Sea Wolf. Joshua, is that your ship? called out the captain of the sea urchin. The captain, Killian McGregor by name, was an old, ugly man, weathered down by years of sailing on the open sea. His eyes had an evil glint in them, and he stroked his long, gray beard as he talked. Joshua, he now called, are you a coward? Are you not the captain of your own ship? Come, let us join forces. We shall hunt for the sea orb together. Joshua walked bravely to the edge of the boat. There was no sense in being a coward, even though he knew that what he was about to say could mean certain death. 
He stared at the sea urchin. He had to admire the craftsmanship, even though it was an enemy ship. The metal spines that stuck out from every end glinted in the setting sun. Those spines, which had given the ship its name, ensured that every attack made on it would indeed prove futile. Captain Killian, Joshua now shouted, you know as well as I do that the sea orb is not meant to be taken from one's own. Captain Killian shot Joshua an evil eye. And you know as well as I do that no silly rule like that will stop me. I come to offer you a deal, you scurvy sea dog. You can either join forces with me and control ocean magic for yourself, or I will destroy your ship and you as well. Joshua's heart lurched. Destroy his ship? His only pride? And for what? But Joshua knew that the sea orb was not to be stolen. Still, he had to admit to himself that he did have an inner desire to possess ocean magic. What made the very waves roll and the sea winds blow? If one had control of it, one could be as powerful as the sea wolf himself. Still, Joshua was no pirate. He would not steal the sea orb nor help Captain McGregor to search for it. Captain Killian, Joshua called out, I will not be joining you. Your plan to rule the ocean shall never succeed. The captain stared coldly at Joshua. You will regret that decision for the rest of your life, and that, O oh sea dog, shall not be long. Fire, my men! With that, the sea urchin began to fire cannons at the sea wolf. Joshua ran to his own cannons and, try and began to try and force back, but as I had mentioned before, the sharp metal spines of the enemy ship protected it from every effort to destroy it. Finally, the sea urchin sailed up to the sea wolf and rammed into it with its spines. No, shouted Joshua, as he felt his ship being torn apart. It began to sink. Joshua grew desperate. Now you will surrender, shouted Captain Killian. Joshua glared at the captain as the ship went down. Never, he shouted, as he sunk into the waves. The captain, instead of being pleased, suddenly grew frantic. Find him, he shouted to his crew. If it's the last thing you do, find Joshua. His first mate, Jones, looked confused. Isn't this what you wanted, Captain? Isn't it good that Joshua is gone? No! Find him! Without him, oh, I can't even say it! Find him, if it's the last thing you do!